Hello, and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today we're doing a fun video, and this video is sponsored by Natural Bulk Supplies, and they sent me some fabulous butters and oils to play around with and asked me to make a soap formulated with some of the butters they sent me, and also I'll be doing an emulsified body butter at another date. But today we're doing soap. We're gonna do a triple butter soap. I will be sharing the full recipe down in the description box below. So look for that and I'll talk you through it as we make this triple butter. Now my old triple butter formula that I've used for years has a combination of shea, cocoa, and mango butters, which is fabulous. Well, today we're mixing it up a little. Still gonna use the cocoa butter. Where is it? Okay. I've got all my supplies down here. So here's the cocoa butter they sent me. It's a deodorized cocoa butter, but I think it still has a really buttery scent to it. I love it. So, um, and I love cocoa butter in soap. Most of my soap recipes have cocoa butter incorporated in there. It's that good. So we'll be doing cocoa butter and another fun butter we're gonna use today. And this is my very first time using this. Let me show it to you first. There you go. How do you say it? Okay, don't come after me. I'm gonna tell you the two pronunciations. I Googled this. It's the Google pronunciation says Kupaku. So the other YouTube uh, video pronunciation says it's pronounced Kupawasu. So Kupaku or Kupawasu, however you say it, this is a fabulous butter. Let me read some of the description to you of what Kupawasu or Kupaku, however you say it, is why it's good for your skin and why you might want to incorporate this butter into your Bath and Body products. So it says, I'm going to say Koopa Koo. <laughs> um, it's an excellent emollient. It restores elasticity to the skin while providing antioxidants and hydration. It's considered a super moisturizer because of its hydrophilic which is water loving properties as it carries water to the skin and makes the skin supple, soft, and more elastic. Well, sign me up, I like all of that. So that's going in the soap. And then we have one more fun butter that I have never worked with before. Okay, and that butter is kokum butter. I think I'm saying that right, kokum. Looks pretty straightforward to me. Anyway, this just feels fabulous and I'm so excited to use this. So let me read to you some of the properties of kokum butter. Uh, it says kokum butter is a powerful, it has powerful moisturizing properties and it won't clog pores. And it has been used to treat a variety of skin issues, including acne, minor inflammation issues, dry skin on the hair and scalp. So um, that's just some of the benefits of kokum butter. So both the Kupaku <laughs> and the Kokum are new for me and they both have really good moisturizing properties. So I formulated uh, this triple butter recipe specifically to use those butters in there. And that's not all. We're taking this triple butter over the top. I'm gonna to be using buttermilk powder in the milk and oil methods. I'll put the powder in the oils and blend it. And for the liquid oils, part of this recipe has olive oil. We are going to do this chamomile flowers. I got from them, we're gonna do an oil infusion with these chamomile flowers because chamomile has some fabulous skin benefits. So a few of the things that chamomile extracts, um, essential oils, and this oil infusion are good for is, they say chamomile can help reduce redness and skin irritation, and it's very soothing. Plus, when I have made chamomile oil extracts, it smells really good. It gets kind of a, it develops a nutty fragrance, which I think is fabulous. So we will do an oil infusion. This is gonna be a fun video. We're doing all kinds of new stuff. And I will show you how to make a chamomile oil infusion, and we'll walk through that and let that do its whole thing. And then uh, we will just talk through the whole rest of the video, the recipe, all of that. Let's talk about the fragrance that we're gonna do today. I was just thinking of all these butters and the chamomile and that nutty fragrance. Now, I think this would be perfect unscented or with an essential oil, but today I have this cocoa butter cashmere from Be Scented. And uh, it says that it doesn't cause issues in soap and it uh, discolors to a medium tan, which is fine. I think a beautiful tan color is gonna go perfect. And this just smells warm and I think it luscious. Um, cocoa butter, it's not chocolate smelling, but it does have a cocoa butter undernote to it. It's good. I am so excited to make this soap today. Um, and I think that's it. The first thing I need to do is uh, we will get our liquid oils measured out 
and talk about making an herbal infusion and then we will get to make and sew. All right, we are gonna go real quick through making an herbal infusion. So I'm using these gorgeous chamomile flower buds from Natural Bulk Supplies, the sweet almond oil. And I like to do a ratio of about one part herbs to two parts of oil when I'm doing an infusion. I'm not measuring here, but I'd say it's about one cup of chamomile to two cups of sweet almond oil, which, oh my word, this is gonna be great. Uh, all of the medicinal properties of the herb will leach into the oils throughout the simmering process. I put a little cloth down in the bottom to keep the glass from bouncing against the bottom of the jar. I simmer it for over an hour. I use a strainer and a nice clean tea cloth, a cotton towel to strain it through so I don't get any bits in the oil. I want a nice smooth oil with just the properties of the herb in there. Simple, simple to do, but boy, that oil is luscious when it's all done and it smells so good. It smells almost caramely nutty. So there it is. I'm going to put it back in the bottle and now I have a chamomile infused almond oil that I can use in soap, lotions, any product I want, but this oil is over the top great. We are back and ready to get going on this recipe. The first thing I want to do is get my lye water prepared and set off to the side to cool while we get into the oils and the butters and all of that. This is how I like to soap. I make my lye solution first, throw it in the ice bath, and then get to the rest of it. So the first thing we need today, I'm going to be measuring in ounces. I will also have this recipe written in grams and percentages down below to share with you all for this triple butter soap. But I'm talking in ounces today because that's just, I think, in ounces. So there it is. So I need 10 ounces of distilled water. This is refrigerator cold water here. And I'm going for 10 ounces. Set that down, and now I need five ounces of lye, sodium hydroxide. Uh, and this recipe, I'm doing a 5% super fat. So if you went and plugged all these numbers into a soap calc with the ratios I'm using, 5% super fat. And what super fat is, I get asked that a lot, is Super fat is the extra oil beyond the saponification um, amount. So a 0% super fat would mean all of your lye solution would saponify all of the oils. And then any extra oils over that just add moisture and I think just a lot of skin, you know, wonderful properties in your soap bar. It makes it feel really nice and not too um, squeaky clean. So here we go, we've got our sodium hydroxide, we have our chilled water, and the way I like to do water is I'm gonna add my sugar. This is just unbleached cane sugar. You could use white sugar, uh, powder sugar, or no sugar at all, totally up to you. But I'm gonna add some sugar because it adds lather to the soap bars, and I love it. So this right here is a two tablespoon scoop. I'm not gonna add all of that in here. I'm gonna go about halfway. So that's about one tablespoon of sugar. I'll go ahead and throw that in there. All right, and now I'm just gonna stir this around to dissolve the sugar. Um, because if you add the lye before the sugar is dissolved, it will just kind of turn into a caramelized clump on the bottom, not pretty. <laughs> and so, and we don't want clumps in our soap. So we're just gonna stir this till it dissolves and let me go get my silk fibers. And that's looking pretty well and dissolved right there. So now I'm gonna take my silk and I'm just gonna take off a little pinch. Not a lot, this has no weight, just a teeny pinch. You can leave this out of your soap. I love to add it. I think it does add a little silky feel to the lather and a glossiness to the bar, but this is totally optional. So I'm just gonna pop my little silk down in the cold water and we will add our sodium hydroxide. And you want to have a mask on, stand back, don't breathe the fumes. And I like to stir my lye until it's 100% dissolved in there. And then you can walk away and let it cool, but um, don't stop stirring until you have all the grit dissolved. And this heated up really nice and hot. The silk is already melted in there. There we go. Now, normally I would let this start cooling before I come in with my sodium lactate 
This is also from Natural Bulk Supplies. I love sodium lactate in my soaps. It unmolds like a dream the next day. And you use sodium lactate at a rate of about one teaspoon per pound of oils. This is about a 50 ounce batch. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put one tablespoon, that's three teaspoons, um, in here into the lye water. Typically, I wait for the lye water to cool off a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. I have seen some soapers put their sodium lactate in with the oils. That's fine too. It's got a little flexibility to it. All right, here's my one tablespoon measure. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there. And uh, I just like to go ahead and add it relatively soon so that I don't forget that. <laughs> All right, sodium lactate's in there. Lye water is gonna go off to the side to cool and let's get our oils out. All right, we are back to measure my hard oils and butters, and then I like to pre-melt them. Um, I pulse it in the microwave. If you hate the microwave, you could do a double boiler or set this in a pot of warm water. However you like to melt your hard oils, that's how I do it. So, um, and today I'm gonna be using my little 48 ounce mold from Amazon. So making a little batch today, little but mighty, I love it. So that's the mold we're using. Let's start with our butters and oils. The first oil I need is coconut oil, and I'm gonna be using 10 ounces of coconut oil. All right, now we get to add our fun butters in here. I'm gonna start with two ounces of cocoa butter. This is so wonderful in soap. And it's really nice. Um, they sent it chunked up like this, so it's easy to grab little bits and pieces. Cocoa butter is really, really hard, and if you have to chunk it off with a knife or something, it's kind of, you know, it's a bit of, a, it's some work. <laughs> so these chunks are perfect to measure out. Okay, we've got two ounces of cocoa butter. Now I need two ounces of my Kupawasu butter. <laughs> I'm gonna go with that name, I think. Let's tear this out. Two ounces of this butter, which I think is gonna be so good in here. Oh, this smells good. It has an almost chocolate note to it. Tear out my scale, and now I need two ounces of my kokum butter. Oh, I love exotic butters, they are so fun. And we'll definitely be doing a lather test with one of these bars for sure. Okay, these are the hard oils and butters. I'm gonna go give these a little bit of a melt and we'll come back with the liquid oils. All right, we are back for the liquid portion. And I've got my infused sweet almond oil and this smells so caramely good, I'm loving it. So I need two ounces of sweet almond oil in here. and I need two ounces of castor oil. I almost always have castor oil in a soap. It really helps support the lather. It doesn't create lather. That's the coconut oil and the sugar, but it helps support the bubbles and stabilize them. And I, I think it just adds something. I don't add castor oil in too high of a percentage, but a little bit of castor oil is great. I need two ounces of castor oil. I try to stay under 10% when I'm doing castor oil. So this is 6% in this recipe, just for reference. All right, and the last liquid oil is olive oil. I just got this one at Walmart. Um, it's, you can see it's just an extra virgin olive oil. It's got a darker color, and uh, that's okay because this fragrance is gonna discolor to a medium tan or a light brownish color. So anyway, we're doing the olive oil, and I'm doing 15 ounces of olive oil. So there are the liquid oils. Let me go grab all the dry additives and uh, I'll be right back. All right, we are back and it's additives time and I am using white kaolin clay from Natural Bulk Supplies. I just put it in my big container. Well, yeah, here's the container. <laughs> I put it in my big container, but I did indeed get clay from them. And before we add our additives, I'm gonna talk about the fragrance. I am adding at 5%, this cocoa butter cashmere from Be Scented says in soap, which is a category nine 
product, you can add up to 10%. That's a lot of fragrance oil, and I'm not gonna add that much. So I'm adding at 5%, so I have two and a half ounces of fragrance oil going in here, and because it doesn't cause rising or acceleration or anything, I'm gonna go ahead and add it to my oils. If your fragrant oil or essential oils are known to speed up trace or cause issues, don't put them in right now. Save them till after all your blending is done. Um, but this is a well-behaved one. It's going right on in the oils. And again, that's so I won't forget about it later. Now let's add our dry ingredients. These are my big buckets that I normally do um, for my big, big batches I was doing, but this is a tiny batch. So again, a two tablespoon scoop. I'm gonna do about half of this. So I'll do like one tablespoon of the kale and clay. And I do love clay in my soap. I really think it adds a little something, something. Here's my colloidal oats again, half a scoop. That's one tablespoon of colloidal oats. And I'll do the same with my buttermilk powder because you know, this is buttery. We're gonna do buttermilk. I'll do one tablespoon of buttermilk powder in here also. All right, let's get these all blended in and let them kind of absorb. And I'm gonna go check the temperature on our lye water and we'll come back when it's time to get making soap. back let's take the temperature here my oils are at 84.2 that's Fahrenheit and here is our lye solution it's at 81.1 I'm so happy with that we're in the 80s and that is normally my soaping temperature now this is my first time doing this recipe so I don't know how fast or slow it's going to move so I'm going to stir cautiously when we start but again the fragrance is already in here and I do have my matte yellow oxide which is my favorite buttery yellow color look at that it's it is just butter color I think like toasted caramely butter so that's going to be our swirl in here and i am thinking that i will probably add just a touch of titanium dioxide in here to keep it on the lighter side all right because the fragrance is discoloring um, i am going to add just a touch of titanium dioxide right in here to the oils this was kind of a last minute decision but i'm going to go ahead and do that just to keep everything on a little bit on the lighter side this is water soluble TD mixed with water. Uh, it's one part titanium dioxide to two parts water. And then it has like little ball bearings in there that mixes it up, if you can hear the balls. Um, anyway, I keep it pre-mixed. I just put a little, I would call that maybe a teaspoon in here, just to keep it, you know, from getting too dark. Let me get that blended. There we go. And now let's go ahead and add our lye solution in here. Go. And you just wanna be careful not to splash. All right, so I'm going to stir this and pulse. So a stir and a pulse just to get a feel for how we're coming along. These butters are new to me. And so anytime I'm working with a new recipe, I wanna proceed cautiously looks beautiful creamy oh my goodness smells so good in here by the way <laughs> all right we've got emulsion so now i'm going to split off for my little color swirl this is a new experience for me making little batches it's been a long time since i've made tiny batches like this so I'm just going for a nice light trace so I can run my hanger through here and get a nice hanger swirl. It's not speeding up, love that. So this recipe is almost a 50-50 split. It's a little more on the liquid, but 50% hard oils, 50% liquid oils for a soap recipe um, oftentimes makes a nice workable recipe that doesn't speed up trace too much. If you're having trouble with your soap speeding up, the first thing I would do is look at the fragrance you're using or your essential oil. That's usually the first culprit. The second thing I would look at is your soap recipe and look at maybe a recipe with a higher liquid oil percentage. 
So that's some troubleshooting if you're having trouble with that. But for me, 90% of the time, if I'm having trouble with a recipe moving too fast, it's the fragrance. It's the next day, it's been 24 hours, and I'm loving it, it smells amazing. Here's the little soap flower I made with the extra batter. Absolutely perfect. So now we have to get this out of the mold and uh, get to cutting it. back with the lovely Olga and it's time to cut. I debated about whether to use my single bar cutter or my multi bar, but I decided we'll go ahead and use Olga today, even though this is a small one loaf batch, which was fun to make. Boy, I tell you what, using those butters was fun. So far, I am loving the soap. It smells great, obviously. And this soap or this fragrance was slow moving. And I've talked about this a few times before but it bears repeating, when you have a slow moving fragrance, sometimes the soap can take a little bit longer to firm up, even with the sodium lactate. Oh my word. Look at those swirls. That is lovely. Oh my goodness. Happy girl. So yeah, these are feeling a little soft to me. I dinged up the underside of my loaf, getting it out of the mold. So I need to learn how to unmold from this particular mold a little better, but um, they are a little soft, so I am going to let these sit overnight before I come in and do my beveling and stamping. So I promised you all a lather test to try out the kupuwasu and the kokum butter along with the uh, cocoa butter. <laughs> kokum and cocoa, those are very similar. Um, so we will do a lather test, but I'm going to wait about 48 hours to do that. We'll see if it does any discoloring. I have a feeling it's not going to do much because I'm not seeing any rim around here. And uh, we did use the titanium dioxide. So I have a feeling or a hunch that these are going to stay just about these colors. And to me, this screams buttery goodness. That's what I'm seeing when I look at these. Oh, I'm loving it. And I want to thank Natural Bulk Supplies for sending me all of these wonderful ingredients to play with. And you'll be seeing them again in a body butter video coming up very soon. But uh, man, what a fun gift to get. And I have a discount code, $10 off orders of $50 or more down below. Check out that discount code. Go check out their website. I tell you what, 
this, uh, the butters and oils I used are just scratching the surface of some of the wonderful things they have offered in their shop. So do yourself a favor and go check them out. I think you'll enjoy their butters and oils as much as I do. This was fun. So I will come back and talk through the lather test and the beveling and stamping and all of that. So I'm just going to get the rest of these here and give it a day or two and we will be back. All right, real quick before we get into a lather test and the stamping. Oh, what a difference a day makes. Look at the color morph. It's actually rather cool looking. Um, so it is definitely going to have a little bit more of a morph to it, but that's kind of groovy, I think. So here's the inside. This is an end piece. Um, here's what the inside looks like. It hasn't quite reached there yet, but you can see a little bit of the modeling here. Um, it's fascinating. I think it's just fascinating. All right, let me go get some warm water and give you a lather test on this soap, and it, mm, it smells great. Uh, we'll do a lather test, and then we'll come in and do the stamping, uh, beveling and stamping, and um, I am going to wait a few days before I do the final photography of this bar so that at the end you will see the end final color. Um, anyway, I think it's kind of groovy looking. It almost looks like I have three different colors instead of just one. So let me get some warm water. Let's give this a lather right, test. We're back with some warm soapy water and also 24 hours later these are nice and hard for coming in and doing the beveling and stamping so they firmed up really nice just took an extra day you can see where i dinged it coming out of the mold <laughs> so let's get in here and see how this lather is going to feel with the butters the kupuwasu which is how i'm going to say it <laughs> i hope that's the right way to say it when i did the formulation for this in soap calc um, it said that it was going to be a nice lathery soap, and indeed, oh my goodness, indeed it is. So let me just lather up. So it's got more the first couple turns. It's a very dense, creamy, I mean, this feels just creamy. Let me add a little water and build up some big bubbles. Feels wonderful. I am delighted with this recipe. I'm going to be using this recipe more. Triple butters, all oh, the goodness, oh man. That is a great lather. Oh, I'm so tickled. And I just want to thank Natural Bulk Supplies for sending me these fabulous oils and butters to play around with. You'll be seeing them featured a lot. Um, they were very generous in sending me a gift box. Um, so fun to work with. I love trying new butters. This is a 100% win for me. By the way, all this discoloration and the funny morphine and stuff, that is the fragrance. It's not the recipe of the soap, but um, which is always cool. Anyway. Thank you to Natural Bulk Supplies. So please go check out their website. They have a lot of things. I think they're really high quality, really good prices, and um, I am delighted. I hope you give this recipe a try, and I hope you have a wonderful day.